from Country Diggers. Um, we have all heard about the Titan submersible submarine that imploded down at the Titanic wreck site. Well, uh, when that happened, it got me thinking of a tragedy that happened almost 39 years ago, July 7th, will be 39 years, 1984, that the SCI Titanic or Titanic, um, it was a river boat on the Tennessee River in Huntsville, Alabama. It capsized. And it, it just that just got me thinking about it. And I'm going to read you a little story about it. This article is from um, David Tor Tortorano. David Tortorano. Okay. And he wrote this article on July 8th, 1984. And hope y'all enjoy. I'll be going back and reading a little bit about the Titanic and also the um, White Star Line ships. And there was like um, 13 of the White Star Line ships that sank. And uh, we'll be going into some of them. All right, this is an article on UPI Archives. It's um, upi.com. This is uh, July 7th, 1984, Huntsville, Alabama. It happened that date, 39 years ago. A woman who swam to safety after a 70 mile per hour wind shear capsized a boat on the Tennessee River, said Sunday she would have drowned along with her husband and 10 others if God hadn't told her what to do. I was trapped in the boat underwater with everybody else, and I heard God talk to me, Margaret L Largan said from a hospital bed. He told me to open my eyes, and when I did, I could see a light. He told me to go to the light, and I did. And the next thing I knew, my head came out of the water. Mrs. Largan's husband, Carl, 40, was among the 11 who died Saturday when the double-decker Sternwheeler Titanic, owned by SCI Corporation of Huntsville, capsized in a thunderstorm while cruising the Tennessee River. Now, I was 14 at the time in 1984, and I remember watching that on the news, and I remember me saying in my head, why would those people be out on a boat, on the water, during a thunderstorm. Well, we're fixing to find out. Seven people, including the boat's three crew members, survived and clung to the pontoon hull of the 90-foot paddle boat until help arrived. Alabama Marine Police Investigator John Clifton said a preliminary report showed it probably was wind shear that caused the 27-foot high vessel to overturn on the 400-yard wide river near Ditto Landing. I live just uh, maybe five minutes from Ditto Landing by car. <laughs> but um, the height of the boat had a lot to do with it, Clifton said. Explaining the flat bottom vessel did not sit deep enough in the water to prevent it from overturning in the strong side winds. The boat, a modern diesel powered copy of an old river boat cap captained by Frank May, 31, was taking 15 SCI employees and their families on a weekend cruise on the Scenic River when the sudden storm hit. There was really no time to react, said first mate Gary McCluskey, 50, one of the seven survivors. Up to the point that we turned over, we were just dealing with a regular summer storm. We were holding our own, nothing life-threatening whatsoever. Everything turned white, 
just like in a blizzard. You couldn't see anything, he said. It was so loud. The captain couldn't hear me shout, and he was just two feet away. McCluskey, McCluskey said the floor shifted and started falling away. We went so fast, I never really lost my grip on the door, which he had been holding to keep it from slamming shut. McCluskey said it took five seconds, no more than eight, and we were slammed back into the water. Clifton said the weather was not threatening when the Titanic uh, left about 10.20 a.m. The National Weather Service said the thunderstorm raked the area about 11.35 a.m. May, a veteran skipper, correctly turned the boat into the storm, Clifton said, but a sudden wind shift hit the port side of the 85-ton vessel and flipped it in the murky green, wa green water. As far as I can tell, Frank checked the weather. It was decent when they went out. He was going by the book. He did everything he was supposed to, Clifton said. Clifton said May sent the passengers into the lounge on the lower deck when the storm struck and told one of the crewmen to break out life jackets. Mrs. Largan, who was hospitalized overnight for observation, said the worst part about her ordeal was knowing my husband was down there. I couldn't find him. Every, every time I dozed off, it just keeps coming back in my mind, she says. It was a terrible tragedy, said Gene Sapp, the president of SCI, an electronics compo components firm with 4,000 employees. It was an act of God, and we are deeply saddened by it. The other victims were identified as Jason Tolbert, 8. His parents, Randall Tolbert, 28, and Pam Tolbert, 25. A whole family died in this. All, they were all of Fife, Alabama. Sangretta Goal, 16, Near J. Goal, 12, and their parents, Raddy Goal, 40, and Katina Goal, 30, all of Huntsville, Sandy Dunson, 21 of Newmarket, uh, Nancy Elizabeth Pratt, 13 of Huntsville, and Patricia Ann Battle of Huntsville. And that was a very, very sad day. Uh, I remember it, but as I said, uh, my 14-year-old mind couldn't wrap around them being on a boat in a thunderstorm on the water. But apparently it was a pop-up and uh, like a, you know, pop-up thing. And it hit hard. But anyway, um, we'll go on to the Titanics now. The Titanic, of course, sank on April 14th, 1912. April 14th and 15th, actually. It hit the iceberg on the 14th, I think, and actually finished sinking on the 15th. <laughs> but um, they, they did want to do a replica of the Titanic called the Titanic II and has pushed the launch dates. They did a movie on the Titanic II, too, but... Um, they pushed back the launch dates to 2022, then nobody ever heard anything about it again. In 2006, the replica Titanic project was scrapped due to high cost and a low amount of support for the project. The first Titanic survivor, Mil Milavina Dean, had expressed her opposition to the project. Okay. The White Star Line <coughs> um, was composed of ships that uh, the Titanic was in and uh, her sister ships, which one of them was the Oceanic. Oceanic. We're just going to go through a few of them. Uh, the Oceanic Maiden Voyage, March 2nd, 1871. Not long after departing, she had 
to return because of overheated bearings. bearings. On August 1888, Oceanic collided with the coastal liner SS City of Chester just outside the Golden Gate. The latter ship sank, killing 16 on board. In 1895, Oceanic was sold for scrap. She was considered a success for the uh, White Star Line. <clears throat> the SS Atlantic. During the ship's 19th voyage on April 1st, 1873, she struck rocks and sank off the coast of Nova Scotia, Canada, killing at least 535 people. It was the greatest disaster for the White Star Line prior to the loss of the Titanic in April 1912. RMS Republic built in 1903 and lost at sea in a collision in 1909. The ship was equipped with a new macaroni wireless uh, telegraphy transmitter and issued a CQD distress call, resulting in the saving of around 1,500 lives. Known as the Millionaire's Ship, because of the number of wealthy Americans who traveled by her. The wreck of the Republic was found by Captain Martin Bayer Bayerly in 1981. She lies uprightly rough 50 miles, roughly 50 miles, 80 kilometers, south of Nantucket Island and about 270 feet 82 meters of water. <clears throat> we got the um, HMHS Britannic, not to be confused with the RMS Britannia. HMHS Britannic was the third and final vessel of the White Star Lines, Olympic class, White Star Lines Olympic class of steamships and the second White Star ship to bear the name Britannic. She was the youngest sister of the RMS Olympic and the RMS Titanic. She was intended to enter service as a transatlantic passenger liner. She was operated as a hospital ship from 1915 until her sinking near the Greek island of Kia in the Aegean Sea in November 1916. At the time, she was the largest ship in the world in active service. She sank after striking a naval mine of Imperial German, of the Imperial German Navy and sank 55 minutes later, killing 30 people. There were 1,066 uh, 1,066 people on board. The 1,036 survivors were rescued from the water and lifeboats. The wreck was located and explored by Jacques Cousteau in 1975. The vessel is the largest intact passenger ship on the seabed in the world. RMS Taylor <coughs> <excuse me. coughs> was a full-rigged iron clipper ship chartered by the White Star Line. She was large, fast, and technically advanced. She ran aground off Lombe Island and sank on her maiden voyage in 1854. There were more than 650 aboard. Only 280 survived. She had been described as the first Titanic. They shared similarities in their separate times. Both were RMS ships and White Star Liners, although these were different companies, and both went down on their maiden voyage. <clears throat> Inadequate or faulty equipment contributed to both disasters. Faulty compasses and rigging for the Taylor and lack of lifeboats for the Titanic. Oh, excuse me. The remains of the wreck were rediscovered in 1959 by members of the Irish 
Irish Sub Aqua Club because the wreck is over 100 years old, 166 years as of December 29, 2019, a license to dive the site must be obtained from the Office of Public Works. The wreck lies at 17 meters depth deep, some 30 meters off the southeast corner of Lombe Island, in a small indention. Substantial wreckage includes the whole side plates, a donkey engine, and the lower mask. The woodwork was salvaged shortly after the wreck. Cookery and several pieces of the wreck are on display at Newbridge House, Donabay. <clears throat> then we got the Titanic, of course. The Titanic in the, sank in the North Atlantic Ocean on April 15, 1912, after striking an iceberg during her maiden voyage. An estimated 2,224 passengers and crew aboard, more than 1,500 died, making it the deadliest sinking of a single ship up to that time. It remains the deadliest peacetime sinking of an ocean liner or cruise ship. Then we have, we'll go to the Nomadic. The Nomadic, 1911. She was built in 1911, uh, was in service 1911 to 1925. The only White Star vessel still existing today. It was repurposed as a floating restaurant in 1974 on the Paris sign. Uh, purchased by the Titanic Belfast Society in 2006 and restored in 2012 as a museum. And now we come to June 18, 2023, the Titan submersible. The Titan submersible communication with um, Titan w with Titan was lost one hour and forty five minutes into its dive. Numer numerous industry experts had raised concerns about the safety of the vessel. Ocean Gate executives had not sought certification for Titan, arguing that excessive safety protocols hindered innovation, and five passengers died. And that, hope y'all enjoyed, that's it. Hope you enjoyed.